joined now by Washington State head coach Kyle Smith and student athletes F.A. Abogidi and Tyrell Roberts. And we'll open it up for questions now. Don't be shy, we'll go to P.J. in the back. P.J. Carlos Mo, Pac-12 Networks. F.A., you probably don't, and NBA Academy, F.A., I'm sure you don't remember, but uh, I remember you when you were playing in Australia, and I was involved with the NBA Academy, uh, Brooks Meek, when you were injured, and you, you were torn up pretty good, and uh, Brooks Meek, who really ran that program back then, believed uh, what kind of impact player you could be if you got the opportunity. Uh, coach stayed with you. Um, when you were not playing then and you really had kind of a gruesome injury, uh, did you think this could happen, what's happened to you, and uh, coming and playing in the NCAA, playing at Washington State, and the success you enjoyed last year? Um, thanks for the question to start with. I, don't, I wasn't really expecting to be, you know, playing basketball at this level. All I was all focused about was just trying to come back, you know, just – try to play basketball again to be the athlete that, that, that I was before I got hurt. So, um, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. It was a huge blessing for me to be here. You know, last season I wasn't thinking I was going to be what I, you know, performed the way I did, but I did. And, you know, thanks to all the people that supported me. Kyle, you saw, you, you saw enough before his injury or that, that he could develop the way he has. And I don't, I don't want to put a ceiling on it. You still... No have a long way to go, I know, F.A., but, uh, I mean, I, again, I just dwell on that. I saw him, and there were two guys that Brooks really believed were going to be special players at that academy, and I, I'm wondering if they're ever going to play again uh, yeah. at that point. Yeah, no, I agree. It was, um, we we're coming in the program looking, you know, we have to look at everyone, and yeah, I think he has really good coaching over there at NBA Academy, like Marty Clark, and had a relationship with Marty and Jim Shaw, who worked with them there, and, uh, his character was impeccable. And it's not, you can tell by the type of person he was. So if he could manage his injury, we felt like he'd be pretty good. And then when I got to see him, he wasn't even cleared to play yet. <laughs> but I, I phoned it back into the staff. I said, well, he's the best athlete I've seen. And, uh, I, you know, we didn't really have to play, but he's just so quick off the floor and jumper. I said, well, where we're at, we had, you know, we had to sign nine guys in a, like over – Six month period, and I said, well, "This was would be very fortunate to have him." And uh, it, like I said, like Fa said, it's been a blessing for us too. It's a blessing for him, but really a blessing for us to have him. We'll go to Casey. Casey Jacobson with Pac-12 Networks and Fox. Uh, thanks for being here with us today, guys. Uh, so Tyrell, you did not play last year, so I know you got to be chomping at the bit to get on the court and actually perform. So I want to ask you um, just about that. How how anxious maybe you are to to perform at this level in your career and then uh to coach smith maybe kind of talk about you know you lose bonton who had a really nice second half of the season really come on strong and he's kind of ha tyrell has to fill some of that some of those shoes and kind of what you expect uh from him this year um, yeah just as you said i'm i'm very itchy to play again i think it's been a year and seven months right now uh, i think it'll be a year and eight by the time i get to the first game um, obviously, my season ended last time I played uh, on a bad note. Uh, COVID hit, you know, and then it just canceled our conference tournament, or uh, the regular tournament, actually, first round of the regular tournament. And so I opted out and just put in some work, um, obviously made the move to transfer, came here, and uh, I think I've been fitting in pretty well, and I'm just ready to get back out there. Yeah, no, I, I think Ty's been really a great addition for us. I know he's got the hair, so he replaces Bonton in the same way. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, we're really, there's a guy I've actually saw play in high school a lot um, when I was at the University of San Francisco, and he's always been a winner. Uh, he won big at UCSD, and they went 30 and 1, I believe, his last year. And we, when we talked about, you know, having a chance to get him, we're like, I don't know if we have many guys in our program that can go 30 and 1 
whether it's junior college, high school, or that. So he's got the DNA to win. And then he brings a lot of the same skill sets that Isaac did as far as the ability to play make, run point, uh, can can score. And obviously, we, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a transition, I'm sure, but we've had a wonderful summer together. And, and the reason he's down here today is just his leadership and his uh, – He's been great addition to the team, and I think he's really poised to, to lead us. Larry Eldridge. Eldridge Cows and Pac-12 Network. Uh, Coach, congratulations on your contract extension. I think it was well-deserved. Uh, I want to ask a fair question, but I'll ask you this first. If you can elaborate a little bit more on Tyrell's game, because I have you guys' this first game this year against Alcorn State, and I don't know anything about his game at all, so I don't know if you want to talk about it or if Tyrell wants to talk about it himself. But <laughs> Tell me and tell the fans that are watching what they can expect from number two. He's a bucket. <laughs> All right, you know, Elders know, like, he's a bucket. That's what he is. He's a, he's a combo. I say play both spots, and uh, he's got exceptional quickness and good distributor as well. Um, and like I said, good leader. So I think, you know, he can end of the clock. He can get us a bucket, and uh, he can put a lot of pressure on the opposing team's defense. Okay, and for F.A., you know, F.A., I called a few of you guys' games last year, and uh, I just was blown away with your athleticism. You know, you reminded me of, of, of Sean Kemp. That's what I was telling everybody. This guy jumps like Sean Kemp, which is just phenomenal. But tell me what you worked on over the offseason. Everybody saw you last year. They know you can dunk. You dunked on Worth Alatiche when I had your game at Oregon State, who's another one of the best athletes in the country. But you made him look like he wasn't. So tell me what you worked on this offseason. Um. I worked on two things this season. I was more, mainly focused on my ball handling, mostly on my shot. My percentages last year wasn't great on the three, so I've been working a lot on that during the, during the summer. You want to tell them about your summer experience? Oh, yeah. Um, I had a chance to go to the, to the Nigerian um, Olympic qualifying team. Um, you know, try to, like, good tryouts for them. You know, it was, it was pretty great. I played with, like, a lot of NBA players. Uh, it was really tough to get into, too, but, you know, just what it is. Oh, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Jay Drew, Salt Lake City Deseret News. Uh, Kyle, as, as one of the most recent uh, coaching hires in the conference, what advice or what heads up would you give to Craig Smith who I don't think is related to you, <laughs> probably not. And also, uh, Coach uh, uh, Tommy Lloyd. What would you tell him about the league? Uh, welcome, first of all, and uh, better bring it every night. It's a it's a challenge. It's excitement. I think that's what attracted all of us here. And uh, they asked me a question like, "Why are you why are you here?" As myself, I said, "Like, you kidding me? You know, John Wooden, Ralph Miller, Mike Montgomery, Lou Olson." So I'm sure they're honored and tickled and just how competitive it can be. And obviously, Tommy and I go back to WCC days um, and had some, some battles there. They, they eventually separated from us when it was at St. Mary's. But uh, just an exciting league to be a part of now, uh, just off the success we had postseason. And um, with those two additions and their success, I think it'll only be better. Go to Kevin Dan. Kevin Dan of Pac-12 Networks. Coach, you've kind of always been a guy leading underdog programs, if you will, from Columbia and USF. And Washington State kind of has that same feel as well. Maybe doesn't get a ton of national attention, but you know, picked to finish eighth this year. But with what you returned being so young last year and putting together a winning season, it, how do you feel about kind of your, your prospects this year to, to really make a run at this thing and, and get into the NCAA tournament? Well, I, I think our talent is there. Uh, not just the experience is where we're still lacking. We're still very youthful. Um, I mean, Jim Shaw, my associate head coach, says we're like a junior college team, age-wise, a little bit of that. But um, we had, some, and I think you do usually the most growth you'll show is from that freshman to sophomore year, at least one year in. Um, so FA Deshaun uh, should make a big jump forward. Uh, TJ Bamba um, should make another jump. So we we feel good about it, um, but we got we got to do it, and we we have to address our ball handling issues, which I think we have with some of our newcomers and Ty especially. So um, we're looking forward to it. We have to play with some expectations a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, it's a process for us, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll compete. 
Ben Parker. Uh, ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. Uh, you guys added an interesting grad transfer in uh, Michael Flowers. Just curious to get your thoughts on what you expect him to bring to the team this year. He's he's another guy I would describe as a bucket <laughs> a little bit. He's uh, uh, kind of instant offense, kind of offense in himself as far as he can uh, end the clock, he can make baskets, and, and he can pick and roll. He's really good middle of the floor. He's unselfish. I think there's concerns. Uh, he averaged 21 a game at South Alabama, but he's – he fits in really well there, um, and uh, I think he's going to give us that. Whether he's starting and come off the bench, I think he's going to be a guy that you're going to have to account for on the scout. And uh, again, he addresses some of the issues we had last year as far as ball handling. I think he's a really good ball handler, good scorer. He's more than just more than just that. Okay, we'll go to Bruce Pasco. Hi, Kyle. Uh, this is Bruce Pascoe with the Arizona Daily Star. I was just wondering if, uh, as these NIL deals starts to play out around in the, within the conference footprint, but you know, maybe some other schools in the West and nationally, et cetera. What do you what do you see in there? And and do you feel like it's? It, I mean, it's early, but I didn't know if you feel like it it could shift things in recruiting. Uh, you know, make the playing field more unbalanced or or same or or you know, does it not matter? Um, I think we're in a wait and see approach on exactly how to proceed. I mean, our coaches we're <laughs> we're kind of handcuffed in what we can do and help our guys we try to give them as much information um i think it only helps enhances a situation like washington state because we are the pro team in in pullman and our part of the state in that little region of the country so um you know it's going to take some time probably for people to understand what it's about but i think it gives our guys uh an opportunity there um i think that's fair We'll go back to Kevin for follow-up. Hi, uh, for Epe and Tyrell, just kind of from what you've seen, kind of in practice this year, it, if you can just kind of talk about your excitement going into this season w with the roster you guys have. Um, I just feel like we have more in depth right now. Last year we didn't we didn't have a lot of guards playing the front court, but this year. There's a lot more, lot more depth. We got a lot of guys like Tyrell, Mike Flowers, No Williams, you know, stepping out to take that spot. So you know, like they are really, you know, investing a little bit more in what we have to do. Those are freshmen coming in, Bar and Gay, um, awesome player. You know, um, I believe next year, um, this coming season, we we are really going to be good. Um, yeah, just as Fa said, I think our depth is really good this year. We have a lot of options. Um, it's just going to take some time for us to gel just because we're so new. There's so many new guys. Um, but once that comes together, you know, I believe in us 100%. Okay. We got Bruce on follow up. I was just wondering for all of you, uh, the way you're, you're speaking and with the, the guys you have back and, and some of the talent you brought in, I mean, maybe are you, you were picked eighth, I think. Do you feel like that's too low? And, and how good could this team be? We'll find out. That's why we play the games. I don't 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 invest too much in that. Uh, but we do feel like we're we were competitive last year, and I think we did. You get, we got experience in the front court. Um, and I said well, addition of uh, some some impactful players in the back court. But we'll see how it comes together. Um, but the league's good, man. <laughs> there was uh, five or six teams. There postseason, uh, some elite eight teams, a final four team, and. Uh, we got our work cut out for us, but we welcome it. You know, winter's coming. That's our, that's our theme. Come on up to Pullman. Coach, I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. <laughs> My broadcast partner, partner, Greg Heister, told me you guys are a tournament team. You just told me you got two guys that's the bucket. We all know you got one of the best athletes in the country. So you're trying to tell me pick number eight? Come on, Coach. There's Beak, good you know? teams in this league. We haven't done it. We've got 11th and 10th. We get a lot of, you know, we got to do it. We got to do it. Um, hopefully, the 8th will be a little chip on our shoulder. Um, but we got to do it. We've had some success. We've beaten Oregon. We've beaten UCLA. Um, we beat. Or we almost swept Oregon State. We went to the final eight. So we have some things to build on. We just got to be consistent and, and keep building there. So, you know, we really don't set big goals at the beginning of the season, it's really process oriented. Um, I know everyone talks about our analytics, but it really is day to day and you see the growth and at the end of the day, the results usually happen. So we'll look forward to it.
Hey, Coach, how are you? Awesome. Awesome. You know, you've got a deep team. Anything a little different schematically that you may have this year that you didn't last year? Anything more at your disposal in terms of, uh, you know, philosophy and coaching changes? You know what, uh, the biggest uh, thing I think that's the depth is the quickness um, that uh, we can we can pressure a little bit defensively, I think, with our length. Like F.A. Kamir Muhammad, who's a freshman, who's – um, 6'10", 6'11", forward, kind of play, play center, but he, he's a good defender in length. And then uh, Ty, um, we have fresh and Miles Rice that can really pressure the ball. Jefferson Koulibaly, who was hurt last year, and he's really good. So we got some quickness there, but we will we will address it. We, Isaac Bontown was a really good defender at the top of the floor, <laughs> so we're really sturdy. And Noah, I forgot about Noah, Noah's a very athletic kid. So we're a little quicker, but we need someone that kind of – they got to develop quickly to be able to handle some of the, the guards in this league. Um, you know, Tiger Campbell, you're gonna, don't, don't, don't think you're going to be able to gamble on that guy and pressure him and get him out of stuff. But I do think we're, uh, we have a chance to improve in that area. And if we should improve ball handling. If we don't, I'm in trouble. We can't, get, we can't handle the ball better than you guys. Eldridge, you can get after me. I'm about to get after you right now because Dang. since you mentioned Noah's name, I, you, you talk about you got two guys that's a bucket. Yeah. We all saw what Nora did last year, National Player of the Week. Uh, you still just going to go for being all right at number eight? <laughs> We've been a little banged up. We've been a little hurt. We've had some guys that take a little time away from the program. But, no, with Noah, we get – yeah, he's, he's an all-conference talent, so that would help a lot. He'll be good. we got F.A., Noah, the experience. All right, we've got some inexperienced guys. But we'll see. Some good teams ahead of us. Yeah, all right, all right, I'll let y'all. Uh, we've got time for one last question. PJ in the back left. Kyle, what happened in Indianapolis with the league, the success the league enjoyed? How does that translate uh, to Washington State? I think it gave us a huge confidence boost, especially like uh, Oregon State with the ride they had and knowing that we, you know, we played two really tough games with them. We beat them at our place, and we lost a tight one at their place. And just knowing, like, yeah, I thought, thought the league was good. Um, and then, you know, and then to get that national respect, there's no doubt we, we were working out in the spring and kind of, you know, our chest puffed out and proud of our league and what we've done. And we beat a, we beat a Final Four team with, with six freshmen, um, you know, and they, they also beat us pretty good at their place. But, you know, there's, there's room there to grow, and I, I think the whole league probably feels the same way. Um, and we look forward to like non-conference, see what we can do, and get ourselves ready for league. Okay, uh, that's all we have time for. Thanks for being here today. Best of luck this season. Thank you.